Hello everyone, my name is Kelsia and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Mary Jane Firearm. She's a 24 year old well-known traveler here on YouTube and there have been many 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 videos made about her in the past I would say a couple of days, even a couple of weeks. Now, Mary Jane Byram is allegedly being accused of scamming several women of anywhere ranging from $250 to a couple of thousand dollars out of money from basically trip schemes that she would plan, inviting girls out to Dubai, um, and basically not promising what she was going to deliver. Today I'm not going to get too in detail about particularly what they're allegedly claiming that she did on the trip because again, it is alleged, I don't know. But the thing is, I have been watching Mary Jane on YouTube for a couple of years now. I actually started watching her videos when I was living back in Korea and she was living in China at the time. And I was really intrigued to see what it was like living as a black woman in China because I just knew my experience in Korea, but I didn't exactly know what that was like. So it was cool to kind of see it from her perspective. Now, throughout the years of me watching her, I remember just feeling like a little bit uneasy watching the progression of her videos. One, because there was about two times where I basically caught her in a lie. <laughs> like she would just say different information in like 2019 compared to her videos in 2018. And so it really confused me. And so I wouldn't say that I'm entirely like thrown off like completely shocked by these allegations that these women are making against her but at the same time i do th think that there was hard clear evidence throughout the timeline of her videos of her doing things that may just have been a little bit shady that we could have watched out from so again i'm not going to get too deep today into basically the specific allegations that these girls have made against her because honestly you can watch that plenty of other places but what I am going to talk about today is the red flags that I feel like a lot of us women who follow her and are inspired by her travel stories and the fact that she wanted to travel to 100, and 100 countries in one year, just basically a couple of red flags that I think we could have watched out for that she actually put in her video herself. So let's get into it. So the very first red flag that I noticed from Mary Jane's videos was that she specifically tells us throughout some of her videos that she's not a personable person, she hates events, she does not like big crowds. And so when I learned that she, you know, kind of created this group tour where she invites women all over the world that she doesn't know and she kind of plans this trip for them, that was a little bit like, oh, that's interesting. But again, nobody's really gonna think too deeply about it. But the amount of times throughout Mary Jane's videos that she mentions that she is not a personable person, she doesn't like big crowds, she doesn't really like, she she's a very like one-to-one -one person as she puts it. I hate parades, I hate parties, I hate barbecues, I hate gatherings, like, honestly, I'm not, I'm, I keep trying to tell you guys, like, I'm not an average person, like, I'm very weird. So those type of things give me crazy anxiety and I hate them. I'm a very one-on-one -on -one person. I like being one-on-one -on -one with somebody or just by myself. She kind of goes um, a little bit personal into her life talking about not specifically how she became that way, but basically her childhood and why I think she actually is such a one-to-one -one person. And she talks about how she grew up homeschooled with her, her sister and her brother, and that going into a public school setting was super, super shocking for all of them. They eventually went to a Christian public school and how it was just such a new world, meeting and constantly being around kids her age and so i guess throughout high school you know she was just more of an introvert and really did stay to herself and she does mention that in her videos so it's not surprising to see that she enjoys traveling to a bunch of countries without her friends well as she says she doesn't have any friends um and yeah she just kind of likes being solo dolo we were not something our mom take us there because we were homeschooled so there was no there was no uh, we were very disconnected we grew up very disconnected from Everybody else, let me just put it that way. She claims that she likes being solo dolo, but in reality, we know that her 
siblings have been on several of these trips with her regardless if it was just for fun or if it was for work I think it's really difficult to claim yourself as a solo traveler when you constantly have people with you um, but I digress red flag number two so Mary Jane several times throughout her videos specifically in 2018 and 2019 kind of relives and shares with us uh, some of her stories of how she was traveling broke at one point the beginning of her travel journey you know she wasn't making a lot of money from youtube she wasn't like this big travel person that we know her to be today and that she really actually didn't have a lot of money that she actually had to borrow money constantly from her sister her mom and her grandma that were just willing to support her through what she was going through she had gone through a really difficult time in the united states and so that's why she went to china but she pretty much blew all her savings and was really being financially supported by her family. Because my, what my mom was doing for the longest time, giving me all of her money um, to the point where she literally had none left because I was telling her I was trying to build this, you know, career for myself. And that's the reason I'm here. Also, my other grandma has given me over $6,000 um, for travel that she didn't necessarily have at the time. Now, Honestly, what's interesting about that is even later on in 2019, as you can see, she's moving up the ladder. She's probably making some money on YouTube. Um, she shares a story about how she accidentally had no money while she was in Japan. Now, she talks about Japan being her absolute favorite country to travel to uh, and I believe that she's been there more than once actually a couple of times so I don't know if that was actually the first time she traveled to Japan or the last time she traveled to the P Japan okay I know this is a long time ago but are you going to do a story time on when you were in Japan and were traveling with no money by accident because in a previous video I mentioned this I can remember which mom yes I'm still gonna do that story time for sure but as a solar traveler as a traveler like you do this for work and you kind of end up in a country where you literally have no money and you're basically broke that was a little bit interesting to me again not a big red flag but a red flag you know stuff can happen in countries but that is kind of alarming to me how she said that she had no money and essentially I guess she had to ask for help from her family once again. Now these girls that traveled on this trip with Mary Jane were constantly alleging that she did not have any money on this trip that she was asking them to pay for hotels, to pay for rides, to pay for excursions, and that she was definitely gonna pay them back later. Now, most of them are alleging that she never paid them back, that while they were paying for things, there were girls who didn't even have their flight paid back to their home countries, got a weird feeling about it, and then just decided to pay for it themselves. And so here you can kind of see a history of her being in countries and her not having money. And this was even before she planned this trip with all of these girls. Now, this is the third red flag. So Mary Jane is very well known for speaking about racism. A lot of people who want to travel and are interested in her lifestyle ask her, especially particularly as Black people, you know, they ask her, do you experience racism? What is it like being a Black woman in this country? What is it like being a Black woman in that country? And Mary Jane hates this question. She states this over and over again throughout her videos and even on her Instagram live. I do. And I love the fact that I preach that I have not experienced racism yet or at all or I haven't experienced anything that should stop somebody from traveling and I inspire young women to uh, step, step out of their comfort zone and do things they never would have thought of doing because everybody told them the whole world is racist. Like it's ridiculous. Now what's interesting to me about this is that I'm a black woman and I've lived in Asia before and I get a lot of questions like that but it's more just like genuine concern like i don't get mad at people or i especially don't get mad at black women for asking me what is it like being a black woman living in asia that's a very valid question what's weird about this to me is that mary jane specifically can vividly tell us how racism in her hometown growing up around a bunch of white people and Amish people has directly impacted her and her sister's life growing up. And that there were very, very real ramifications of 
racism on her life growing up. It didn't stop her from traveling the world, but it definitely did affect her. And he straight up told me like, you're really ugly and I don't know why you like me because like, you're just really ugly. And I would never date a black girl. And I'm just like, okay, I understand. Um, I was super sad during that time. And my siblings, you know what I mean? So anyways, um, that's when I started straightening the crap out of my hair. My hair was really long at that time too. It was like almost too, if I would straighten it, it'd be to my hips. And I, you know, I always would because I just wanted to fit in more with the white people. I'm like, I don't want to be so stand outish. I just want to fit in more. And um, like, something's wrong with my hair apparently because there's such a big deal about it. And I straightened the crap out of it. I went and got blonde highlights to try and be less, you know what I mean? But, and I begged my mom, can I get blonde highlights? Can I get blonde highlights? Can I get blonde highlights? She kept saying no. And one day she said yes. And I got them. So what I didn't understand is why she was so extremely bothered by black women honestly asking her questions about racism. Now in one video, she starts to go into detail about how she gets a ton of racist comments on her YouTube channel about basically Americans being racist towards people in whatever other country that she's visiting at the moment, right? So she specifically talks about it being people in the Middle East and how she can't stand the comments that she gets from basically Americans talking a bunch of nonsense and garbage about these people that they don't really know anything about in the countries that they've never even traveled to. That's all. I just had to snap for like two seconds because racism gets me really, really, really irritated. And there's so much racism in my comments, so much against Middle Eastern people. Even when I was in Europe, there were so many racist comments about, comments about Europeans, you know, like there's just racism. Like I understand that it happened because I'm a traveler, but just like there's, I'm not tolerating it anymore. So what's interesting about this to me is she understands the ramification of racist comments coming from Americans towards other ethnic people wherever they are in the world, but she doesn't really understand the depth of why Black women are asking her, am I going to be good if I'm going where you're going? Um, which is just so funny to me because I think if it were the other way around and other people were asking her like, hey, like, is it cool to come to America for Muslims? How safe is it? What is it like as somebody who's maybe touring around America? Those were very valid questions. I really don't understand why she can't stand when black women ask her about what it's like being black overseas. I see it as a very valid question. And honestly, a lot of the girls that she quote unquote allegedly has scammed have claimed that um, they didn't really get good vibes from her as far as her relationship towards other black women. They honestly think that she might be colorist, but that's just all alleged. I really don't know. And again, because she's grown up so sheltered, so disconnected from really black culture. My mom was kind of strict. Um, but I don't think at the time I knew my mom was strict. We thought all moms were like that. Um, I didn't know who Beyonce was until high school. I did not, or until close to then. I did not know Destiny's Child or Aaliyah or all these people. I knew nothing about it. We listened to, like, my mom loved music from like all around the world. So we listened to world music, um, like Spanish, reggae, uh, African music. We grew up listening to that stuff. We didn't listen to anything. It was curse, curse words at all. Um, yeah, so very cut off from the world. Red flag number four. So. I'm really trying to understand this one. So this is about Mary Jane's personal relationship with men in her life. So Mary Jane in one video begins to talk about um, basically giving advice to women about, you know, don't be obsessed over guys and that she never imagined having sex in high school or middle school and she grew up in a Christian home. High school's outside. People were kissing and sleeping with each other and doing other sexual things and that just blew my sister's mind my sister and I's mind and my brother and we were so not on that type of stuff and everybody knew us that way anyways um so there no there'd be no reason for us to have a boyfriend or date anybody in high school because we were on a, we weren't on the same type of time when while all of those things may be true in another video she suddenly hits all of her subscribers with the news that she was pregnant at one point and that she actually went through with an abortion. And that led to a complete down spiral of her mental health and that's kind of why she chose to go to China. I lost everything as far as my school situation. And because I was so obsessed with this boy, I had a girlfriend and I found out that um, he had a girlfriend, but also we had been talking on and off for a good year and a half or two years and he had been messing with a lot of girls. And I, I don't want to be cheated on. 
it's not gonna happen. In the video, honestly, it just sounds like she's kind of bigging herself up like, I don't need a boyfriend. I know God's timing for my life. I know when God will give me a husband. There's no need to stress out about boys. Um, this and that. All I see on the internet is girls complaining about guys and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, is it that deep? <laughs> it's, it was, it's never been that deep to me. I was just devastated. I went into a deep depression and um, I stopped eating. I didn't even leave my room. I stopped going to my classes. Um, it was, I was in a bad place. For it comes to another reason why I don't think that I have friends at this point in time, it's because like so many girls are obsessed with boys right now and it's just like, I don't have the empathy. I really don't have the empathy. Meanwhile, just literally two years prior, maybe not even a whole two years prior, she was literally running away from a very difficult situation that she had with a boy that she was extremely infatuated with. But she had the clear head to not go ahead and have a child with him. But it's just interesting to me how one moment she goes to talking about how she just is very like almost clear headed, knows exactly what she wants. Um, she does not like being around other girls who constantly talk about boys that are infatuated with boys. It's oh my man, he took me back in 20 minutes and it's just like... I was a little bit of a stalker back then, and I actually had him on Snapchat, um, but on a different account that he didn't know about. And this boy was not at work. He was hanging out all day with his friends, um, and I'm pretty sure a couple girls, but he would never put the girls on his Snapchat. It's very irritating to her. And to the next video, talking about how she's infatuated with this boy at some point, so much so that she ended up spending a lot of time and money on him that she just basically shouldn't have. Now, I'm not here to degrade her for those decisions. I feel like as women, we've all found ourselves basically in a situation with a guy that honestly, we just spent way too much energy on. But it's what what it's difficult for i think her subscribers to come to grips with is the fact that she kind of talks about herself highly in one way where she doesn't find herself in these situations but behind closed doors she actually does um so she has really vulnerable pockets and moments here on youtube and then she just has moments where it just sounds like she's straight up like bluffing or lying red flag number five so now this was actually the first red flag that i ever came across so mary jane is a proclaimed follower of jesus a christian and so am I. And I, guys, you don't understand how much research I've done to really come to talk about this topic today because I've watched her on and off for the past three years. But I remember why specifically I stopped watching her videos two years ago and it was because of this. I have found so many video clips to enter into this to back up what I'm saying. But for this one, she just has so many videos out. I can't find the video. It's for the life of me. And this video was the reason why I even wanted to come on here and talk about this topic. There was a video, I believe it was back in 2018 or 2019, where Mary Jean was basically saying that um, God is going to give her whatever she wants because she just puts her mind to it, essentially. And I'm very much paraphrasing what she said. Um, and that basically she doesn't understand people who are basically suffering or who are poor. You just have to work hard, get the bag, and get what you need, and God is going to bless you, period. And I cringed so bad in that video, and that was the last video I've ever watched of her up until like 2020, or 2021, really. And it's just, it's giving me very much prosperity gospel. It's giving me very much like, God's only going to bless you if you do the right things to be blessed. I think that she has a very misinformed understanding of the gospel and that good news has to be good news for the poor and for the rich. So if basically a day of rest and relaxation and family time and joy and money and blessings can only come to people who have access to those things, then it's not actually good news if the poor can't have access to it too. So for me, something like an example that I would give is like, I think that it, as a resistance to capitalism, I think everybody should have a day of rest, just like the Jews. I honestly think that it's the best 
form of resistance against capitalism that young people can do today, right? So if I would ask myself, what does a day of rest look like to you? What does rest look like to you? For me, it can't look like Mary Jane's lifestyle traveling to a four or five star hotel in another country, right? But rest should be accessible to everybody. If it's not, then it's not rest. It's not true rest. It just means you have money that gives you access to do things, but that's not true rest. So honestly, um, you can see different clips throughout her time on YouTube where she listens to just a lot of very like prosperity gospel type message messages. And honestly, if you're not familiar with prosperity gospel is, it's basically a warped um view of the gospel of Jesus Christ that white Americans have basically come up with to say that God is going to give you everything you want if you just trust him, you just believe in him, and if you do all the quote-unquote right things. And you have to be mentally strong, strong, mentally stable, and be mentally stable. If you don't want to be mentally stable, then be sad, happy, mad, sad, joyful, sad. I think it's a choice. And I know there's some people think, depression is a chemical imbalance. You can't help it. I don't believe that, so... So I noticed that that was something that she was kind of promoting on her channel and she would say things along the lines like So I am not fearful of anything to be honest and God has always and will always take care of me so there's nothing I have to worry about. Being fearful and worrying are useless traits, useless feelings, useless, they're useless, they're stupid. Fear is a natural emotion and God gave us feelings, right? So when I'm in danger and I'm in fear, my brain is telling me to get out of that situation. Now, obviously, I don't think that we should be led by fear and led by our emotions in all circumstances, but I think we've gotten to this place in the Christian community and talking about fear as like the worst thing that could ever happen when in a lot of times fear is the very thing that will save our life. This is my two piece on this topic. I am so sorry to the girls who got scammed by this girl, um, allegedly. I gotta say that for my safety, allegedly. But um, I really hope that, you know, as somebody who says that they follow Jesus and that they wanna honor God with their life and just knowing how she shared about the hard times that she went through, I really do hope that Mary Jane and her family can you know, come to some type of consensus to give back the money that is owed to these girls. And also, I just want to say the point of me making this video and pointing out all of these red flags that I noticed throughout her video without even really looking is that we just need to be on guard, y'all. We need to have our eyes open because the truth is the most honest, trustworthy person online could really be the person that's gonna scam you in Dubai. So guys, all that to say, keep your eyes open, keep your heart open. Don't just be out there trusting everybody and anybody with your money. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed um, this episode. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.